Hello everybody, it's Ezzy Mad Haven here today, and I'm going to be trying my best to potentially help out your guys' gameplay. Or, who knows, some tips and tricks that I can offer can probably be super helpful, uh, just depending on how you take it, or if it's something you're struggling with and you need something new to try out. And we're also going to be going over a couple of tanks that I think right now are extremely dominant in Tier 8 compared to a lot of others so um first things first let's go ahead and uh jump jump in take a look here capture king tiger this is going to be the first match that we're going to be checking out um yeah i don't really know we're going to be going over my gameplay and what i've done inside the match to try and utilize everything that has been offered on this tank uh, about uh, a few months ago, they did put a massive buff on this tank. They increased the armor rating from 185 to 245 on the turret, uh, 190 about around the gun mantle. They jumped the top plate from, I believe it was 150 to 160. Uh, the side of the turrets from 80 to 120, and uh, I still don't know why we have 100 right here for whatever reason. We still have 100 millimeters of armor on it. Kind of just seems strange and maybe a little bit of a overview loss it's kind of weird how we have the tracks there and they're kind of as a hundred but you know it's war gaming i'm not exactly worried about it so starting off i'm using a power terrain honestly the reload in this tank it's already fantastic nothing really to boosting the reload just feels absolutely useless uh the skills in this crew this is a crew that i made specifically for my american heavies so we got six cents rapid loading born leader Steady aim, just one perk to increase the overall accuracy. I'm not really boosting accuracy on a lot of my tanks. Clutch braking for that additional, you know, movement speed and everything else that we can get. Uh, situational awareness, probably one of the best perks in the game for a heavy, medium, light. It doesn't matter what you're in. This perk, in my opinion, is one of the must-haves, along with Born Leader, Sixth Sense, and Track Mechanic. Just because getting your tracks back on, super advantage on that. Uh, up next, we got rapid aim for the turret rotation, gun speed, and then off-road driving. Off-road driving, um, if you guys aren't running this in your heavies, um, you're, I feel like you're going to just fall behind. Off-road driving and the power terrain combined. Uh, one of my, probably one of the best combos in the game with just those. They're absolutely fantastic. Now, before we do jump into this replay... Um, I have to share this, and it's I'm not dissing on any other content creators. I'm not here to belittle anyone, be mean, but key cards. Key cards are massive advantages. So let's say you want to spend hundred dollars in the game, um, buy confidentials, classified, uh, top secret. If you're looking to try and get as much as you can out of what you're doing, I I find key cards to be absolutely amazing. We have monster key cards. I didn't even realize those are there. But for newer players, confidentials, dude. You spend 100 bucks on these or 115 You buy three sets of the uh, 25 plus 5, so 30, 90 cards. You have a 5% drop chance to get an extra card. There's a chance that you'll open like 140 of these. The biggest advantage to opening the confidentials is getting boosters. I mean, look at my boosters. There's, I have quite a bit. And I, they stack up for me a lot. So, not belittling, belittling anyone, but I'll jump on the key cards on a later date. I do find that they are just really, really super important to have. And if you're looking to use them, they're just worth it in every single way. Alrighty, so starting off, let's go ahead and take a look at the map here. We're <laughs> that's a lot of tens, you know. It just it literally just does a massive split. So right at the bat, you know, it goes lots of tens, one nine per team, and then eight. This is probably one of the absolute worst lineups that you can have as a bottom tier tank. Now the captured King Tiger with its most recent armor buff. Trying to utilize that armor as much as you can. Maxing out your gun depression to increase the turret armor value. And just trying your best to maintain or keeping distance, using your faster reload to try and provide assistance where you can or if you're able to, to track down a target and, well, track down, like literally track the absolute living crap out of him because 
that is the goal. Um, if you have a fast enough reload, you can keep someone permatract. And if you keep someone permatract, you can get all the assist off them. Plus, we have repair kits with 60 second cooldown timers. I'm kind of, as of recent, I feel like that's a little too fast because it allows people to get really aggressive once a minute and they're able to risk a lot of hit points or risk no hit points and just move in and out without really much of a problem. I think if we had like a 90 second cooldown instead, like PC has, that would bring a bigger, it, it would just make a big difference in my opinion. Now, looking around, kind of wonky with my controls. I'm just, you know, making sure my thumbsticks are going well. This is the first match inside the capture. Well, no, this is the third match, but I like to mess around with my controller. I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed that beforehand. Usually at the very start of each and every single replay, I do like a little wonky move and, you know, do a little dance at the very beginning. You know, just making sure everything's going right. Now, whenever you think about your armor models and let's say a position like this, you look around your terrain. Your, your terrain is the one thing you want to focus on. Uh, right here, I am a little bit too exposed. I, I aimed a little high on the IS-7 shooting into the spaced armor. If I was shooting lower, that shell probably would have gone through. But right here, we're just trying to make sure that we... If you notice, I turn left to try and make him ricochet out the top plate. But we are up above him as well. But angling a little bit to the left because it's the only part that's showing to him. That's going to make that part thicker, harder to go through. And I know that for some people, the reaction time on that can be difficult. Uh, taking a little bit of a splash from artillery there, conquer or gun carriage to check the map to make sure, see what artillery landed near me. And uh, honestly, really surprised that he only did like 104 damage rather than half my health because, you know, it's tier 10 arty. I'm a tier 8. And right off the bat, there we go, WZ-1115A, probably one of the more dominant tier 10s inside the game, bouncing off of us with an AP shell, but they only have 250 pin. Now, one thing I love is just, you know, you're playing peekaboo, and we just blocked a heat shell as well. Utilizing the gun depression in any of your tanks, even if it's lightly armored, it, it's going to just increase your armor rating tenfold. That 245 probably shot up to like 290 to 300 millimeters thick. And if you get them below your gun depression, that turret should almost be impenable unless you say hi to a Yagaru. Now, positioning also plays a really big role in how your matches are going to be going as well. If, let's say, I push down along with Blade, um, I don't know why Blade pushed down. He doesn't know why either. He just he thought I went down, and we just had a little bit of miscommunication there. But going down you know we're, we're bottom tier we don't want to try and get into the fight we want to try and fall back get situated see what we can do to help the team with what we offer and you know rocks are slippery by the way just you know, just there's a tip guys they're super slippery now um i have noticed this quite a bit and it surprised me the other day to hear some people talking about it um if you want to lock your turret like you see me do hold r1 or rb with default settings on your controller or take a look at which one's a turret lock i don't know if there's any setting changes that would swap it around but if you hold down rb or r1 um you can lock your turret in place that's something that i didn't realize not a lot of people knew and it, this is coming from uh comp more than it was anything else intermediate comp and it, it just surprised me to know that they didn't know how to lock their turret. Now, you know, if it, thinking about where I want to go, we have a 60 TP behind us. Um, I want to be able to get side shots and anyone trying to rush him, or he, he can also defend me. But, you know, if, usually things don't go as planned, or they can go as planned. Cross shots as well can make a real big difference in your gameplay. So let's say you're doing a platoon of two. If you guys are always sticking next to each other, right next to each other as much as you can, uh, you will find yourself lacking a little bit because you don't have a crossfire. If someone rushes in on you, they're going to be able to get around both of you because you're both there. While if you're spread out by like 100 meters or 80 meters, they're going to be able to go around one guy. But now they have to try and go face hug and brawl against the one guy instead. Rather than finding themselves in a situation where you're both right next to each other. And it's easier to circle two tanks than it is to circle two tanks that are spread out. If they're right next to each other, it's really easy. But if you guys are spread out a little bit more and you have two different positions that you're holding, that is 
devastating. Me and Blade have been trying it out a lot as of recent, just seeing what we can do to get it in. And it's been working out really, really well. So, um, another thing to think about while you're playing as well is what is your enemy? What is their loadout? Like, I'm not talking equipment. I'm not talking about anything else specific. So, like the IS-7, for instance, he has AP and APCR. So, the difference between the rounds. Now, if he had a heat round, I would probably be a little bit more hesitant on pulling out. But knowing that he has an APCR round, I felt a little, it, it just, it's a different comfort zone being able to pull out. And I'm trying to get a shot underneath his barrel because if you shoot underneath the barrel, the IS-7, if he raises his gun at all, it's about a 100 millimeter stick and you can go through it. But with the, the different round types, um, APCR ricochets at 65 degrees, AP rico ricochets at 65 degrees, and heat rounds, uh, while they can be absorbed by space armor and they can be absorbed by the tracks without much of a problem, um, they ricochet at 85 degrees and they try going through the armor at the thickness that they land at. So rather than readjusting, they're consistently just trying to go through. If they're not able to go through, then they're just going to bounce. Now, with the IS-7 right here, taking my time on my shots. Sure, I have a fast reload, but that doesn't mean shoot as many times as you can. I'm trying to see if I can get them locked down because we do have a tank destroyer on the left, but now it's just probably best if I focus him out with doing as much damage as I can, seeing that our tank destroyer, the 4005, just went in. Um, this situation, yeah, we're losing. We're losing badly. It's not looking good, but surprisingly enough, capture King Tiger right here, holding together using the armor. We're up to 2,000 block and just trying to get as many shots as we can. We do have a low alpha, but we have a really fast reload with that low alpha, so we're able to put out a lot of shots and make people a little bit hesitant and coming in and trying to focus out getting people low health that way you know they do try to push we have multiple opportunities to be able to pull up and do what we need to do with the 4005 being down 254 we can possibly one shot him if he pushes so that's why he's not really pushing um, along with that we're just in a really tight situation we're not going to be able to get out of it um at the very end of the game there, there is nothing else I could have done to make a difference inside that match. That's just one of those moments that it doesn't matter what you do, you're going to find yourself in just a bad spot. You're not going to be able to go anywhere. It's over. Now, up next, we have the Centurion 5-1 rack, and we'll go over like what I'm using on that tank real quick. So Centurion 5-1. as everything just went really weird. Okay. So we're using optics, a gun rammer, ventilation. The commander in this tank is one of my all-purpose crews for the British. We have six cents, rapid loading, born leader, steady aim, muffled shot, track mechanic, snapshot, situational awareness, and off-road driving. Off-road driving, as I said, really nice to have. Now, before we jump into anything else, I want to bring you guys over to my main screen here. So, taking a look, we have, let's say, my 4005. And just a couple of things to be going over. We're going to be bringing over OBS. Well, not OBS, but my file holder, whatever you want to call this. Now, let's say you're side scraping. You know, you're, you're always going to find yourself in bad position side scraping. So, right here, we have a spot we can pin up in the turret, up on the top section there. One of the best things that you can do to help try and keep your armor, including your hatch, if you have a hatch, rotate your turret. Once you rotate that, you know, suddenly the weak spot's gone. It's just very, very tiny. And just depending on how much you're side scraping, it's going to be really hard to hit it. Along with that, you're increasing your armor tremendously. Against a heat round, this might actually not even go through. Uh, we are only using AP and APCR here. So there's a couple of spots that you can go through. But the difference is... If you're aiming flat on, there's a lot of spots that you can easily hit. But the second you angle that turret, there's a lot less to hit. And I mean, even if you got to, you can really raise your gun, block your hatch, lower it down to help try and cover a separate weak spot if you need to. And don't get me wrong, in the fight, it's a lot harder to control that. But depending on what's going on, this can be 
absolutely amazing. So as we're going to take this block off a section. So like this is the only thing they're seeing. Um, another thing that I can share would be whenever you're, let's say, side scraping, if, if you can point your gun at the enemy, they can shoot you. Even if you're a back-mounted turret, if you're able to lock onto them, like if you're a back mounted turret or you're a center mounted turret, if you're able to aim at them, you're you're fine. But if your turret is a front mounted turret and you can physically aim at your target and you're trying to side scrape, they're able to shoot you. Now, I know for some people that's probably, you know, they already know about that. They already have an idea about that. But for me, it's just really specific on just a little thing to keep track of. Um, another thing is whenever you're coming over a hill, which we're going to be able to use this replay for. And let's say you're hitting a hill and you have two things that you want to do. So you have, let's say, your main that you're focusing on. There's only really a couple of things that you want to keep track of whenever you're coming over a hill. You have your armor that you're going to be able to rely on. You have, if you overextend too much, then your lower plate's going to be exposed, your top plate's going to be exposed. Um, along with that, you have, there, there's a couple of factors that can play into it to help out a lot, depending if you're coming over the main part of a hill. Coming over the main part of the hill is probably one of the worst things that you can do. But taking slightly to the side to come around the side, rather than directly in the front of the hill, could be a better decision just because going over the hill entirely you're exposing yourself to multiple areas of fire it's going to be a lot easier to hit you if you're exposing yourself to nine people rather than only trying to get two inside your view so in on a map like this you know taking the hill on our right side we can take that hill right there and go all the way over like the light tank is but he's a scout he has the concealment he's up there to do his job um, for me i would rather take the lower section since he popped over to get some view range and kind of hug a wall. Now, knowing your armor, kind of looking around with your camera, knowing where you are and keeping track of like how high your lower plate possibly might be. And, you know, I, honestly, I shouldn't have pulled out like I did right there. I wasn't really thinking. I was just going. <laughs> but right here, this is actually a really, really good spot to actually stop it. So, oh, never mind. That's not a good spot to stop it. That's blinding. Now, I'm gonna go back a tad bit. We're gonna hit play. And where I stop, which is right here, from my point of view, I can see a ridge. And where that ridge line is, I know if that T28 prototype aims at me, I know that almost the only thing exposed, if we look at the bottom left of the screen, we see I'm, my hull's rotated. I know that my front tracks stick out a tad bit more, but as we can see, the hill has a slant to it. More than likely, if this T28 prototype was to aim and shoot at me, his chances of pinning me are very, very slim unless he hits my hatch, or he's loading premium and shooting into my cheeks with the Centurion. Other than that, I do not think if he was to aim at me and fire that his shell would go through because of how the hill is below me. Having hills like that be able to make your plays to know how far over you are, how far you need to be until AMX CDC decides to pull up. Same thing here. We're using the same concept and the same strategy to be able to just hug that bottom section knowing where we are, where we're aiming and keeping track of our armor. We're gonna be coming up again, and right here we're barely poking, we don't wanna poke up all the way, and here comes in artillery. That, lucky for us, it misses. And scratch that, so we do get tracked, and the 1357 puts a shot into our hatch. Um, our loader is dead, and our consumable is still on a massive recharge. Uh, another thing is, whenever it comes down to consumables, um, Wargaming not giving the standard basic consumable its own recharge is just, I I don't know why they did that, making it to where we only repair one thing at a time rather than making it a one-time use repair kit, because you gotta think, it, if someone's running a premium consumable, they can repair themselves 15 times in a single match and you get one shot to do it. 
yeah, in, in my point of view, they did kind of mess up the consumables. They're making it a little bit of kind of like pay to play or you need a premium tank to make that silver to be competitive in general inside the public queues, especially for how often artillery hits you and how often you're going to be losing crew members because artillery just absolutely hurts. So taking it slow, we're using the ridge. We don't want to poke over too far. Uh, keeping an eye on the ridge itself too, looking for areas that kind of flatten out a tad bit. Rather than pulling over, all the way over if you're not able to get your gun depression, try angling your tank a little bit to the left, pull forward, see if that helps you get your shot over the hill, rather than just fully exposing yourself. I've seen a lot of people, and all the time, just pull up to a hill and not stop. They just full on go over the hill, completely exposed and you're able to just get multiple shots in and not really worry about it or the, 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 apparently they're not worried about it because they just want to get shot and that's kind of how it seems to go 90% of the time <clears throat> sorry about the cough first getting over a little bit of the sickness and you know it's that time of year you guys you know, getting sick. Stay safe. Don't get sick. It sucks. Now, with the Centurion 5.1, this is actually, in my opinion, one of the underrated tanks. And it's a very powerful underrated tank. Not a lot of people use these tanks. You don't see this tank too often. But with a 120mm top plate on it, you can overexpose a lot more than what, let's say, like an Atomic or Huntsman is able to do. So, I, I believe I've mentioned this a thousand times to multiple people. I always carry high explosives. It does not matter what the situation is. I'm always going to carry HE shells on every single one of my tanks. There's a couple that I don't, and primarily the ones that I don't do it on, they're autoloaders with a reload longer than 25 seconds. With tanks like that, it's really hard to get those autoloaders and to get those shells being able to go in. And right there, we had two bounces, but the second bounce we were unable to, uh, you know, have a repair time in time. But, you know, just a little bit of angling there. Kind of actually don't know how to go over something like that. That's just something I do. As you're approaching someone, try and find those comfortable zones just to kind of bait a shell into your uh, tracks, I guess. Think about, like, how you would side scrape and approach at that angle hopefully they'll just put a shot straight into your tracks and be absorbed um up next we're gonna be taking a look at the e75 uh, i do know a lot of people that play this tank they prefer to use a gun rammer uh, me personally i don't use a gun rammer on the e75 ts i actually prefer the power terrain for whatever reason i love the power terrain uh, as a reason i find that being able to get into a position a lot quicker than someone else Increasing your overall average speed and then combining it with off-road driving. Let's go ahead and take a look at the commander skills here. We've got born leader. That's kind of one of the standards in my opinion. Six cents, track mechanic, uh, controlled impact because this is German. We have clutch braking, rapid loading, steady aim, situational awareness, and rapid aim. Okay, surprisingly enough, I do not have off-road driving on this tank. Um... I'll probably have to put it on and see if that makes a big difference at all. I'm pretty sure it will because terrain resistance, there is a lot of things that can include your ter terrain resistance with off-road off driving. And speaking of terrain resistance, we're looking at, as I'm a Muppet and always lose track of everything and where they are located all the time. I am blind. Someone else probably sees it faster than I did. Oh, I am so blind. It's at the top right. Gosh. Okay, so maybe that's the reason why I didn't worry about it too much. Because we have firm terrain, medium terrain, so you have hard, medium, soft. I don't know why they said firm terrain. It's supposed to be hard terrain. But 0.15 and then the firm at 0.96. Maybe that's the reason why I'm not using off-road driving on the E75 TS. Uh, soft terrain, that is a killer, but that's like water, swamps. You can clearly tell soft terrain from medium terrain and hard terrain. I guess it's pretty simple to tell the difference. You want to drive in water? There, there's your soft. Or sand. Sand is considered medium terrain all over. 
Now, the E-75 TS, this is one of those tanks that I kind of find it to be underrated. Not a lot of people, you don't see it out in the field too often, but in my opinion, this has got to be one of the best tier 8s that I've played in this game. I was super excited for whenever it dropped. It just wonderful. Alrighty, let's go ahead and jump right into this replay here. It's going to be on Mountain Pass. And these matches were actually all played within the course of, I would say, about three hours. These matches were all played within the same time zone. Now, definitely super preferable matchmaking right here, top tier. Just last match, we were up against nines. This match, we're finally top tier. But the reason why I chose to use this replay is because I made a mistake. I got hurt, but I made do with what I did and worked around to the best of my ability. Honestly, RNG was on my side this game. Not going to lie, it was. But the E-75 TS, uh, the armor model in this tank, it's a lot different compared to what you'd see on like the Kree of Vets or the King Tiger. It's a lot more mobility focused it's kind of a, a medium heavy so it's a heavium is what wargaming likes to call them a heavium play style uh no I, I just call it lightly armored heavy tanks or moderate grade or medium grade because you, you have your super heavies you have your heavies you have your light heavies you have multiple types of heavies in game you have your mobile heavies that have they retain the armor values and they kind of rely a little bit more on auto ricochet more than what you would see in other tanks <clears throat> now uh, another great example right here i'm trying to line myself up with the rock to where only my turret is exposed that way if someone does pull around that corner i have the rock covering my entire hall the only thing poking over is my gun um, a lot of people on this map they like to just pull all the way out and then aim down that side because they don't really think where else can you get a shot uh, honestly you can get any tank in this position right here to get a shot across now talking with blade i'm telling him hey you know no one's coming down the bridge if you want to run down there i'll catch up with you whenever i get the chance but i'm gonna put a couple shots down right so there we go shot in the is 372 using stand i only load 10 standard rounds inside my is i don't really you know this is one of those tanks whenever i play it i'm playing it to win every single game that i play in it i'm looking to get a good win rate in this tank it's one of the ones i play to be competitive I don't play this tank to slack off uh, too much. You know, I'm a slacker, but not not a whole lot. Now, wanting to come down the hill. Um, a long time ago, this part of the hill was super fine to drive down, and they messed it up. That hurt. That hurt a lot. So we had to use a repair kit and a med kit. Uh, lucky for me, we're just using what armor we have at really good angles, decent thickness to block all the shells coming from the lichen. But knowing that I am now behind these guys, uh, to me, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be a farm fest. First shot, we bounce. Okay, that's a problem. Uh, we don't want to bounce. We're going to be waiting our, you know, 10 seconds to load in our next shell, 11 seconds to load in our next shell. Uh, Gorinch, just light tank coming back. We put a shot into his tracks. Okay, we are low health. Lycan is scary. He has autoloader. Uh, let's just focus on trying to keep an angle against him. Third shot, we just completely fluffed it. But don't, don't, don't you start, you guys. I, I know what I did. I know I made a mistake. Um, right here, one of the push forward because I did look at the map. I did see I had uh, two heavy tanks coming up behind me, and I didn't want to overexpose too much. Now, right here, taking a look at my hull, taking a high explosive shell from the IS-6. We're going to put one into his lower plate. But coming in at a certain angle, we want to try and make sure that we're maintaining those auto ricochet angles as much as we can. Lucky for us, his RNG just put a shell into the ground because he was shooting out premiums, but it's only 217 pin. Uh, I might have been lucky enough to bounce it. We're going to be taking this slow, using my camera to peek around, try and just, you know, take the hull armor. We're looking for those auto ricochet angles. Um, I get despotted. So the top of your tank, your viewports, everything else, uh, whenever you're peeking a corner, if you become detected, that gives you an idea on where they're located. Okay, so if you get detected, let's say, pulling out just a tad bit, that means that right there is where they're located, right at that corner. Now, there's there's a couple ways to learn that. It's really difficult, and from my where I'm sitting, 
it's just really hard to explain because for me a lot of the stuff I do is kind of just by nature now compared to what most people will have we're gonna be backing off we don't want to pop out too much and you know I if, if you guys judge me for loading a lot of premium inside this tank take a look at the situation I got myself into I kind of I was super happy that I had my premium loadout on this tank because I do run a standard loadout for whenever I'm making silver just playing passive uh, popping up at the hill we have slight angle in the front armor to get that block we're just kind of focused on keeping our hull covered by part portions of the mountains uh, we're using the lack of penetration that the Gorinch has against him right now just because we do have an idea how much pen he has this E75 TS kind of relies on auto ricochet and getting those auto ri auto ricochet angles is just something you want to try and do as often as you can we don't want to over angle our rear end hull because it is only 80 millimeters we're just being really careful even with the skirts um, I don't know if the skirts actually play against your tanks as much as uh, another content creator said a long time ago. Um, I have absolutely no idea if they do or not, but as you guys can see, clearly we're bouncing a lot of shells off our front plate. So, a long time ago, I'm pretty sure if you guys have an idea who I'm talking about, this uh, was mentioned like a year ago, that spaced armor, uh, AP shells, they hit it, they readjust by five degrees, and then they hit the main armor, readjust by five degrees, um, I do not know if that's true, uh, right here, just super excited, like, can I get a shot? No, no, I can't. I don't have enough elevation. <laughs> but, it, it's, it can be a pain. It can be a massive pain at times. Now, this replay, I, I chose this replay to go over, because we did 3,000 blocked, we've done 3,658, and I also made a mistake. I lost a lot of hit points at the start of the game, don't get me wrong, we're all smooth brains at time, and the enemies that came back to try and handle me, um, I didn't really see too much premium flying out of them. Maybe the uh, low was there to make silver with that 67% bonus. Same thing about the Gorinch. Uh, Gorinch is not exactly the most competitive tank. That thing is just a big all mean by itself. He probably would have been better off rushing me with the low. If they both would have rushed me, I more than likely would have been taken out, and they would have been able to pulled off the flank on the right side so lucky for me um they didn't really push too much they just kind of held back went good um yeah i, I i've never done a tips video but whenever i do it I'm, I'm gonna make sure that i share as much as i can because i've i've watched other content creators and i'll tell you now a lot of their tips that they try to give just they don't feel like they line up too well. I'm going to be very realistic with you guys. It's like I'm, I am play just like you. I make mistakes. Um, I get super lucky at times. I low roll at times like that with a 340, with a 360 alpha. You know, but whenever it comes down to it, we're, we're all playing this game because we enjoy it. We have a lot of problems that we're going to run into. Did I just put a premium shell? No, I hope not. I got to go back. I'm sorry. Okay, I have AP. That makes me happy. All right, we're done. We're fast forwarding. <laughs> Sorry, I had to check. You gotta watch me kill Artie twice. But there is just a lot that watching tips and trick videos, watching other content creators do it, it's just a lot of the tips that they do, it's just a split second thing and they mention it. They don't show off any gameplay to really go over it and show it off. Um, utilizing gun depression is probably one of the harder things to do in this game just because there's a lot of positions to get into to, that can be just real specific and you have no idea how to do it now there's just you, you can find yourself to be really limited in some aspects but at, at the same time you can find a lot of things to do inside of a match so for instance, some people who've been playing this game long enough, they know that if they turn a certain, like, they, they look at the very start of a match, and they they stop, they look around, they think to themselves, okay, this is this is not looking good, uh, what, what do I need to do to try and change the situation? Or at the very start of the battle, you see a flank that's not being held, held the way it should be held. And you kind of feel like you need to fall back to help out that side, sometimes pushing all the way down is not good 
at all. Uh, sometimes finding a spot that is further back that gives you distance away from your opponents but allows you to stay hauled down or even utilize your concealment and have someone else that's hauled down kind of getting a crossfire going that makes a huge difference inside a lot of matches with some things that you can do so it, it can be rough and make a difference at times and you know you, you got to try it once or twice you, but sometimes those situations only pop up once and if it only pops up once the best thing that you can do is just think of what can make a difference think about overmatching um overmatching like a vk 16 ap for instance i've seen a lot of people bouncing off those um i don't really aim at the hatch too much anymore the vks um, if I'm above them and I'm using, let's say, like my 50 TP or my Kree Vets, uh, any any gun that's a 122 caliber, you can actually overmatch underneath the turret because that's only 40 millimeters thick, and you can just outright go through it with standard shells. Um, it it does make a big difference to overmatch, and it's it's something that I recommend people to try and learn. So looking at the armor models of tanks, uh, uh, sadly, uh, the T-32 right now has no overmatch points on, at all on the entire tank except for underneath. So uh, Wargaming still hasn't fixed that. And it's a little bit irritating. But up next, we're going to be taking a look at the 50 TP. And yeah, um, you guys probably already took a look at the equipment. Um, as you can see, power terrain. I'm seriously like let's go king tiger power terrain uh centurion 51 i have a gun rammer because it's a medium it has a really good power to weight e75 ts power terrain uh my crevets power terrain uh my bison i got a gun rammer it just really depends you know sometimes you have tanks that just they are just really good all around and you don't really need to bolster your reload and for some reason i feel like 12 seconds and 11 second reloads are totally okay with 360 and 440 and 390 alphas you know just yeah if you can get into a position that's gonna make the difference oh also the amount of premium you load too just wink wink you know all right let's, <laughs> let's take a look at the commander here so this is my 60 tp crew this is my polish defender crew uh, i am going to be redoing this crew because i still have gunsmith on it for whatever reason uh, I do like to block shots with my guns. That's actually the entire reason why I use Gunsmith. But as of recent, I don't really feel like I need it. Because I've been slacking off on using my gun to defend myself for no, whatever reason. I stopped. So, Born Leader. Uh, that's becoming pretty... Popping up a lot. Six cents. Popping up a lot. Off-road driving. Oh, track mechanic. Wow, look at that. Situational awareness. Rapid loading. Um, can we just pretend that's not there? Gunsmith? I don't even know why I have this on here. Uh, but we got snapshot and clutch braking, so you guys can kind of see the combinations here for just focusing on tracks, getting that mobility down, and being able to turn around quickly. Um, another thing is with the 50 TP, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have experienced this, but if you're kind of angling your armor, and let's say you're at this angle, and you get shot in the side that they go right through it, I decided today to actually look at the armor viewer, and I never noticed this, but you have a 20 millimeter plate right underneath your skirts uh we did jump into a private match and check it out yes they can go through your tracks and hit that 20 millimeters and overmatch it so uh keep in mind if you're kind of driving up and hill and they're shooting at you like flat and you're kind of lifting your armor a tad bit to get a better thickness that if they shoot into the tracks they can overmatch your side armor on the very bottom of it just really weird and i i never noticed now that i know um, learn from your mistakes. I, I have put a lot of time in my um, 50 TP. This is blah, 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 blah. One, of the, one of the tanks I really do enjoy. Um, I had three matches in the 50 TP that they all turned out good. They were all uh, decent games, but out of them all, I chose the one that we had in port because, you know, it's preferable to be a top tier rather than a bottom tier and getting absolutely shredded which honestly matchmaking today was extremely nice to us there was nothing really bad and we we did what we could but i i, I chose this one because there's something that's kind of funny that happens i i did kind of feel bad and it, it was you'll you'll see it whenever it happens 
it, it was good. It was just wrong in so many ways. Just so wrong. Alrighty, about 50 TP. Um, once upon a time, I used to use a traction system, power terrain, ventilation on this tank, and that was actually the setup I used to get a third mark on this tank, because I was struggling to get the damage out for whatever reason, so I was all like, hey, screw it, let's just go full mobility, and bringing this tank up to 40 kilometers, I never really thought 40 kilometers was achievable in the 50 TP prototype, but the second I put the traction system on, we were hitting 40 and the difference was just insane. I was staying caught up with the Kree vets and staying caught up with the E-75TS a little bit. And we were just running platoons with just faster heavies. And getting the 50 TP with its armor that it has, knowing that it's the Polish Defender, um, it just got in there and got it to work really, really well. Also, with the um, cold still tanks that are out, do not buy do not select the Demolisher T28 prototype. It just pretend that tank doesn't exist. The Eradicator is so much better. I've given away three Eradicators. All right, on, on stream, I've given away three of them on Twitch. And the reason why I chose the Eradicator is because it's just a thousand times better than the Demolisher. The Earthshaker is just kind of that middle ground tank that's like, you want it, you want it, you don't want it, whatever. It's just a middle ground tank. It, it's decent, it's got horrible power to weight, but it's decent, it's got a good turret. Uh, other than that, its hull is mediocre, and it has Hesh rounds. It's got basically the same gun loadout as the Dragon, uh, but it's got a bigger advantage. It's got a Centurion turret, so it actually has armor. And there we go, putting a 444 into the Paladin, taking a shot in return. Um, not really much to cover in this, except for right there, the way that we're trying to get angled to handle it. And just kind of peeking our front armor to try and bait a shell to come in. Uh, Paladin is in a little bit of a panic. He doesn't really know what to do in this situation. So, I, yeah. Uh, sadly for him, uh, my platoon was ready to uh, interact and counter. So, Paladin, this is just one of those tanks that you, you, you see it quite a bit, but at the same time, you don't see it. Uh, you've got more gun depression off the side than you do the front. I do believe the front is 7 degrees and the side, I want to say it's 10 degrees. I want to say 10. I really do. It is 10 degrees, yes. So, you, you get either 8 or 7 off of the front. And then you get 10 degrees off the side. You can kind of see whenever the barrel drops out if we look off to our side where the drop off point is. Or if you've played the tank, then you have an idea. But um, same thing about driving on bridges like this. If, if you're cutting out to the very far left side, um, you're exposing a lot more than you need to. So driving further out to the right side of the bridge, you know, keeping enemies farther away from you, you kind of have portions of the bridge covering more of your tracks, more of your hull, than if you were to just drive on the outskirts of the bridge right there where the IS-6 took. IS-6 probably took a shell going across as well. Um, sadly, I wasn't watching him do it. And right there, I thought about it. I'm all like, maybe I'd be better off just poking my friend around because, you know, I, I remembered that we have that 20 millimeter spot on the side armor, and it kind of got a little hesitant on wanting to make that push to see what we can do. Right here, pushing forward. We don't want to stop. We want to, we'll stop once we know that we have our gun depression that we can use that. And here we go, just waiting for the VK, waiting for our aim time. You know, lots of aim time on the 50 TP prototype. And snap! There we go, straight into his turret. Okay, guys. This is the moment. Popping the consumable, making sure it goes. Here he comes. He stops. I'm just going to wait. Oh god, so mean. <laughs> I'm dying. Okay. But, alright, jumping back into it. That is another thing that people apparently don't know. Um, also, Strum Tiger P, the, the tier 8, do not try to auto lock. Do not RB lock those guys. Um, if you notice, we kind of had that little bit of a. Their, their model right now is a little wonky, so we'll go back. We'll go back a little bit more. 
But if, if you watch my aiming reticule real quick, where it's locked onto, you'll see it's going yellow red, yellow red, yellow red. So I unlocked it to make sure that the shell's gonna go in. Um, it has a really weird lock-on point, dead center on a portion of the tank, just so you're, you're just you're aiming at the side of it at the thickest possible spot and one of the worst spots to aim at. That can be a, a ricochet or not, and yeah, just. The, they, they, they did some weird stuff. Same thing about like the UDES uh, tier 8 uh, from the Swedish tank destroyers, if you guys have ever noticed. You lock onto the rear of the tank with your auto lock. Just the full on rear of the tank. Like, why? Why is it the rear of the tank? That's just so weird. But it, it, it is what it is. But fans has a game inside the 50 TP. Not really much to go off of the gameplay there. Except for. It was a good game. It was a decent game. A couple of things to go over. You know, teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, there's really only so much that we can do to make things better. Now, I know that this is like my first time ever doing kind of like a tips and tricks, and hopefully it helped you guys out. Uh, there's a lot more to go over, but the difference that I can tell you guys is I am me. I compare myself to me. I don't compare myself to others. I see where I'm lacking. I try my hardest to get better at what I do and just find better ways to handle situations that I put myself in. Now, for let's say the average player or maybe even someone who's just looking to make a little bit of a difference, sometimes trying out something new and switching up equipment can be beneficial or let's say you're you're struggling against artillery um think about a wall that you can go hit uh, i seriously wish i had a lot more examples uh, more than likely i'll be making another video like this later down the future to just show off angling um i did try getting a couple of matches in my kree events today because this is a tank i know like the back of my hand um this in my opinion has got to be one of the best performing tier eights in the game um, a couple of underrated tanks the strength of the captured king tiger right now with the most recent buff on it this tank has become an absolute monstrosity on the field and if you learn how to play it it is just an absolute monster sure you know you have lower penetration premium rounds but they're high penetration rounds for one of your top tier and against tier 10s from the guy at the, the replay that you guys saw you you saw how that match went you you got to witness what happened. Um, Space Bandit, if you do watch my content, drop a comment down. Um, I saw that you did drop one down in the 112 that you were talking about going up against tier 9s and everything else with the, the 112. Um, yeah, that's one of the flaws of the tank. It's a tank with many flaws, but at the same time, it is a monstrous tank that is just very difficult to take care of. If that E75 got close to you in the 112, um, Space Bandit, I doubt the E-75 would ever want to get close to you again. Because with a power terrain on that 112, you'll be doing circles around that E-75 the entire time. And then the turret armor that you have, yeah, you'll be doing circles. But there's really only so much I can go over. You know, the, the only person that you can compare yourself to in this game, if you're looking to get better, is yourself. Take advice from Unicums. Sometimes they have bad advice. Sometimes they have good advice. We're all human. We make mistakes. Um, there's multiple gun types in the game. There's a lot of stuff to go over. I'm still working on understanding equipment and perk combinations, but while doing that, I have learned power terrain and off-road driving isn't just... It's a, it is a combination I struggle to remove anymore. And I'm supposed to be testing stuff and always being broke. I'm always broke on silver, you guys. And I'm always running out of gold for doing stuff and getting new tanks to try out new ideas and to see what I can to increase my overall score. Um, not really much else to go over except for, you know, everyone that's been here this entire time. Thank you for the support. Um, if you want to catch me live, catch me over on Twitch. I might drop a link. I might not. I'm kind of lazy. But, um, 
Well, not lazy. Let's not use lazy. I'm a slacker. I'm a slacker. Yeah, and that's that's the best way to put it. But yeah, I'd, I'd say that's about it. If, if you guys found the content helpful, if you found what I said helpful, or if you feel like I missed something, let me know because I can always go back, go over it, and include it in the next one. But th this is kind of a first take, and you know, if if you're talking about helping out a newer player, it it's not you sit there and you do a 15 minute video on like 40 30 60 different subjects and you talk about one thing for two seconds sometimes that's not helpful to retain sometimes the best way to retain information is to witness it and have someone explain what they're doing in full which you know commentating over replays i try my best i do but see i'm i'm newer to it i've been a part of you now i'm not newer to it i've been doing it for a year okay i have one year of experience and i've had no assistance from anyone with it it has just been me me by myself and blade and a couple of my other friends uh toto for instance fantastic guy uh, he's kind of a slacker and always busy anymore but you know i i have a group of people i play with it's not like i'm always striving to be number one no, I just, I just play the game because I enjoy World of Tanks. Honestly, if there was um, an actual game that came out this year or came out within the last two years that was uh, decent and had uh, involving gameplay, I, I might have stopped playing World of Tanks like a, a year and a half ago. But the thing is, is that every single new game that comes out, and I'm pretty sure everyone that watches my channel can agree, and anyone who games can agree, there's none. Call of Duty sucks, Destiny's dying, and... Yeah, just first-person shooters, you can... You, 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 it, it's like a monthly dose. That's about it. World of Tanks to me, though, this is just my game I come to to pass time and, and enjoy myself. And for pretty much my channel, it's kind of like a vlog, I guess. You know, reviews, other things, I have no idea. But truly, you guys, thank you for being here all this time. Uh, if you feel like I missed anything or something else that you guys want me to go over to help out um i'm gonna have to take a little more time out i'll do another one of these and won't, it won't be an hour long yeah i promise it won't be an hour long but i'll try and cut categories of tanks down to like i don't know 30 minutes at most because there, there's no way that you can do examples of gameplay in five i'm sorry that's just impossible uh, unless you're super editing and you're just showing off the best possible moments. But how did you get into that moment? That's what I want to know. Um, other than that, dude, drop a like, leave a comment. Seriously, leave a comment. I need feedback. You guys have no idea how much I need feedback. Uh, I need to start getting back on my grind. I've been slacking off like no other on my grinding. So other than that, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. Uh, and I'll catch you on the battlefield. Hopefully I'm not killing you guys too often or you're killing Hopefully you're killing me because you know how to kill me uh, Seriously Bisha stop it. I can only handle so much flash <laughs>